You've got Speaker Boehner talking about suing you for executive actions that he says has crossed the line. He says, we elected a president, we didn't elect a monarch or king. Well, you notice that he didn't specifically say what exactly uh, he was objecting to. I'm not going to apologize for trying to do something while they're doing nothing. Even if he gets sued? You know, uh, the, the suit is a stunt. It, but what I've told Speaker Boehner directly is, if you're really concerned about me taking too many executive actions, why don't you try getting something done through Congress? The majority of American people want to see immigration reform done. We had a bipartisan bill through the Senate. It's sitting in the House. Why haven't we gotten it done? And you're going to squawk if I try to fix some parts of it administratively that are within my authority while you are not doing anything? Let's talk about this on the roundtable now, joined by Bill Kristol, editor of the Weekly Standard, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation, ABC's Matthew Dowd, and Donna Brazil, also Democratic strategist. And Matthew, let me begin with you, boy. Pretty clear from being with the president for a couple days this week and everything we've seen in the last few weeks, he's given up on Congress, uh, completely going to go on offense with the American people and going to continue with these executive actions. Well, I think both sides have given up on each other, actually, from this extent of this. There's a, you can just feel, watching the interview and then watching Republicans' reaction to many different things, this incredible frustration that neither side can get anything done right now. And I think they're looking at it as they're nothing to be able to get done over the next two years. And so you have this situation where both are heading bad states in the, in the public's mind. The president's approval rating is down. The Republicans' the Congress' approval is rating down. They both think things need to get done. They're frustrated that neither side willing to give on the other side. And they're both angry about it. And, Bill, isn't there a risk here for the speaker on, 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 on suing the president, reinforcing the idea that, you know, both sides aren't going to get anything done at all? Well, but this is a president who lost a 9-0 opinion in the Supreme Court precisely by overreaching on presidential power. But I, I agree. The lawsuit, I would not highlight that. I would say that the House of Representatives has the power of the purse. They have the power of legislation. They have the power of oversight. Those are the three primary ways, it seems to me, you check a president. And they're doing a decent job in some of those respects. But, Bill, this is but, they, could do, but they could do more. Now, there are times when the courts have to intervene, as in recess appointments. I'm not crazy about this particular uh, move that the speaker is taking. But I think Why is he doing it? Well, because I do think there's genuine... Look, this, this, president, this president has waived things, aspects of Obamacare and aspects of immigration law, and delayed things and created new deadlines in a way that I really do think goes beyond the normal... Yeah. John Boehner had no problem with George Bush's executive actions. The Republican Party has become a distraction machine. First of all, the Congress has no standing in this. And they don't have any jobs plan. They have no health care plan. They're not doing anything to govern on behalf of the people in this country. No wonder the president is saying, we need some action. Let's get some minimum wage. Let's get immigration reform. Those are dead because of the relentless resistance to legislate, to compromise, to govern. You no, know, he's not the only. It's not only John Boehner who's uh, turned Wait, around. Though, look at President Obama. And I'll bring this to Donna Brazil. When he was running for office back in 2008, he yeah. was the one talking about George Bush overreaching on executive power. Well, George Bush did in terms of you know not just executive powers but signing statements. 1,200. Right. I mean, compared to President Obama, who's been very cautious. In fact, one of the criticism of President Obama from Democrats liberals, progressives, is that he's not using his executive power. Uh, you have to go all the way back to Grover Cleveland back in 1885 to see an executive not used to pan to uh, basically enact, uh, you know, good progressive change. Look, the truth is, is that John Bain is in a pickle. He's in a pickle <laughs> because the Tea Party and the other parts of his base, they're restless. They want someone to check the president's power. Why are they not focusing on uh, reauthorizing the high highway trust fund, uh, passing the minimum wage, which the American people agree, background checks, the American people agree, immigration reform, the American people agree, because they do not want to give this president the, any the, good the, victory. The, the, I think the big, biggest part of the problem, and you hi, I think highlighted in the panel before ours about what's gone on in the Supreme Court, the most powerful people in Washington today are unelect, nine unelected people in the Supreme yes. Court. It's no longer the Congress, and it's no longer the president. I think we should have a vibrant Congress who takes on the president legislatively and yeah. passes and pushes the president and doesn't do these things. Both sides are, I think, have been reduced to stunts. I, the I president agree with has been reduced to stunts and the Congress has reduced to stunts. I agree to, with Matt. Stunts. You do need a legislative branch which asserts yeah. its authority. And it's not to say one doesn't have a problem with executive authority when it comes to drones or questionable kill lists and Americans' uh, NSA surveillance, but the balance is out. The balance is off. For example, the president should go to Congress if he's going to take military action in Iraq. And that was a part of your interview. And I think we're sitting here at a moment 
George, where we're talking about John Boehner, but the central question of war and peace for this country, there is no military solution to Iraq. And I have to say, sitting next to Bill Crystal, man, <laughs> I mean, the architects of a catastrophe that have cost this country trillions of dollars, thousands of lives, there should be accountability. I, we should not, if there are no regrets for the failed assumptions that have so grievously wounded this nation, I don't know what happened to our politics and media accountability, but we need it, Bill, because this country should not go back to war. We don't need armchair warriors. And if you feel so strongly, you should, with all due respect, enlist in the Iraqi army. Th that's a very cute line. Katrina. No, the no, people, but it's real. A because million, a million look, look Iraq at the displaced thousands of people being killed. Can I just make a point? A million Iraqis have been displaced. You yes. read that story, humanitarian aid for what we have done to that country is a crime. We have done and to that should, country? What we did to that country? Katrina, let him respond. We, yeah, let me respond. The President of the United States, President Obama, said at the end of 2011, we have a stable and peaceful Iraq, thanks to the sacrifices mostly of American soldiers and Marines, which we did. President Bush made mistakes. He was punished for those mistakes electorally, as he should have been in 2006 and perhaps in 2008. He also had the courage to order the surge in 2007, which made up for those mistakes and left things peaceful. The president, this president pulled out of Iraq in 2011. He let the Syrian civil war explode, and now we have a terrible situation. The president uh, signed an agreement in 2008 with the Iraqi government to withdraw and President Obama tried to negotiate with Maliki, couldn't get a status of force agreement that would give immunity to our troops. The issue now, and we were talking earlier, this country cannot pour more men, women, money into it. It needs a diplomacy, it needs tough political resolution, and bringing the region together. Isn't that what the president's doing? I'd, I'd like to say, yeah. I, I worked for President Bush in his first election, helped him at the White House, worked in his second election, have a son who served in Iraq, two tours of duty in Iraq. We all know, everybody, most everybody knows that this has been a colossal waste of money and men and women, but the blood and men and women of our country. Over 5,000 people have been killed, our, our armed services. We're gonna, and this is gonna end up costing us probably $3 trillion when you add all that in, in, the, in the mode of this. If we don't fix a first mistake, by continuing to make a second mistake. And if you ask anybody that's an enlisted person in this, they will tell you that the only way this can be solved is you have to commit troops there for 100 years. Any enlisted that person. That is not going to happen. That is not no. going to happen. And what we ought to do, and we're on the 100th anniversary we were talking about. Yeah. We're on the 100th anniversary of the killing of the Archduke Church, brought us into World War I, where the borders of all of these countries were settled back then by European countries. We are continuing to, to reap the problem of that in the, in the Middle East in this situation. And I, for one, don't don't think we should send another man or another woman over there in a mistake that was made in the first place. The last word well, we uh, all I believe is that at this point, the parliament is meeting tomorrow, and I mean on Tuesday in Iraq. They need to come up with a political settlement. Give the, Sh the Sunni Arabs, the, the Sunni, uh, the Shia Arabs, and the Kurds. They all have to sit down and share this power. But Al Maliki is a problem. As long as he's heading up Iraq, nobody's going to come together. Well, seems to agree with that as well.